I'm recording this video today because in 2022 I found out that I was having twins and after two miscarriages in 2021 me and my partner were excited scared over the moon but also had a reality that it wasn't going to be a smooth pregnancy. In 2020, I found out that I had um, pre-cancer cells on my cervix, which meant I had to have a procedure done, which was a Lex procedure, which is basically removing a part of your cervix. I was told that I could have children. It would just mean I would need a lot of support mm -hmm. from the NHS. So when we found out we had twins, as beautiful as it was, mm -hmm. we knew we needed support. Yeah. I needed the support that to carry them babies full term. Unfortunately, we didn't receive that. And due to that, our children were born premature at 22 weeks. But before all of that, there were so many errors, so many forms of neglect that I received from the NHS. In fact, a report was made and the findings of the report showed that I received nine points of neglect. There were nine times where the death of my babies was preventable. And my reality is I don't get to see my babies grow. I don't get to watch them take their first step, to taste their first mouthful of food, to say mummy, to say daddy, we know not only just grieve our babies, we grieve the future that we were supposed to have. And it was preventable. My pregnancy was treated as low risk and was treated as a single parent pregnancy. Anyone who had twins would know you have more appointments, you be seen more, but then to have a short cervix on top, that was high risk and I was meant to be treated and I wasn't and at one point we had a small glimpse of, of hope that actually I was going to get treated and I was going to get the support I needed and they cancelled and rebooked me a month later my babies were born before that appointment you shouldn't have to fight to be heard you shouldn't have to scream louder to be focused on especially when you have high risk. But the difference is I did. I called multiple times, multiple times. Every time I called, it was a matter of, well, we've only got a certain amount of time I can talk to you because I have to deal with this, but um, we're going to transfer you. So I needed to be referred to have my um, cervical length scan done. And that needed to be done from like 16 weeks. And it wasn't getting done and at 17 weeks I actually called the hospital myself and they booked me in within two days because they said I should have been seen already I spoke up multiple times through the whole of my pregnancy I spoke up I think one of the most traumatic things that stay with me today is not only you know giving birth to my twins but what happened after I went home and a week later, I was losing a lot of blood. And in the evening I went to the hospital and I was sent back home and I was told to take some antibiotics, you might have an infection. Two days later, I was sitting at home and I lost more blood. And even when my partner called the hospital, I was told, take some painkillers, take some ibuprofen. And my partner was mortified. And it was again in the evening, so we decided to wait until the morning. And when I went to the hospital in the morning, the doctor who saw me saw the amount of blood I lost and did a quick... Uh, she checked me out quickly. It wasn't the most long procedure to be done, which meant that the, doc the first doctor could have done that but they didn't. And when they did check me out, they said that you had remaining tissue from the placenta 
and I've lost so much blood already that it's important for me to have a surgery done. And I did, I had to have surgery. And I was meant to go home the same day, but they said they removed so much clots and blood from my uterus that um, they had to keep an eye on me because I was coming anemic. And I did, I was anemic for a little while. And even to this day, it's my eye levels go up and down from losing so much blood on that day. But again, it's another time that I was dismissed. Another time when it was, just come back another time, you'll be fine. I had midwives, sorry, healthcare assistants come to me to check up on me. And everyone that heard my story couldn't believe what I went through. That shouldn't have happened. That should never happen. This should never happen. And that's the thing, like even people in the NHS are saying this should never happen. But the human errors are there. The mistakes are there. The neglect is there. All preventable. All preventable. If I was from a different background, if I had, from a, if I was from a wealthy place, me speaking up or, or talking up wouldn't just be seen as a frustration. It would be noticed, but we wasn't noticed. And when I've spoken to other black women and Asian women, and when I've read their stories, the first thing I just think is, you was not heard. Everyone should be heard. Everyone should be listened to. Even if it's about someone being anxious, maybe they're overthinking it. Maybe they don't know how the system fully works, but that's a mother carrying that child. And if they have concerns, there should be someone to give them the time of day to express their concerns, to acknowledge that they're anxious, to acknowledge their pain. Acknowledge that they, they haven't felt their baby for a couple of hours. To acknowledge that they've been bleeding, it doesn't feel normal. Not just dismissed. Obviously, there's going to be circumstances when health is an issue or there's things that just can't be done. But when it's preventable, and that's the most important word, preventable, it's unacceptable. We all trusted a system we should be able to trust and they let us down. They let us all down. The data has shown that more black and Asian women receive that care, neglectful care, not being heard, not being listened to. And I, I know people, when they walk into a hospital, when they walk into the NHS, they see black women, they see Asian women taking care of them as the midwives, as the nurses. So to know that it doesn't make sense yeah. that there is actual discrimination happening. Mm. But it's not, it's not just the human errors yeah. that are causing the neglectfulness. It's everything behind the human error. It's not just about the treatment we receive in that hospital or with our midwives or the aftercare it's the after effects today we're filming in a cemetery where my babies are this is my reality i don't get to hold my babies and kiss them good night i light a candle and i come here and I clean up their grave and I put flowers down and I say goodnight to my tiny dancers, my little angels, every night. But the reality of it is the government needs to do more. Yeah. They need to do more for the NHS. They need to fund the NHS. They've given up on the NHS and people like myself and all these other women that are suffering and in pain 
for the loss of their children, they need to do more. I will say it again. We trusted in a system we're supposed to trust, not a free system, a system we pay into. Too many people have said to me recently that the NHS is a free healthcare. It's not free. Everybody working pays into that system. They're there to look after us and we're not getting that care. We are meant to be in quite a wealthy, established country, but we, the NHS can't support us. But the future is going to be the same unless we make a difference. So when people look at their family members and think that this could happen to them, because you don't, you sit here and you think, that's not my story, that's not going to happen to me. That's heartbreaking, but that's not my story. Mm. But the way the NHS is now, that could be your sister's story, your auntie's story, your mum's story, your best friend. And you just think, how has it got this far? Why has this been going on for so long? Why is it only just being noticed? And why didn't the government do anything before? And that's why things have to change now. It can affect anyone in your community. Not just the mothers, the fathers. The ones that have to hold it together and keep going for their, their family. Knowing that they've experienced the most traumatic thing they could ever do, which is lose a child. So I'm pleading, sign the letter, help us make a difference. Help us fight the system that we should all be able to trust in, but we currently can't. We have to fight, change has to happen. And I, say, I feel like I'm repeating myself when we just keep saying change has to happen because I shouldn't have to sit here and say change has to happen in 2024. But evidently I do, change has to happen. Everyone needs to be treated equally. Everyone deserves the right care. And everyone should be able to walk out of a hospital with their child and create that future that they thought they were going to have. And that's what I'm fighting for.